This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and today I'm continuing my look at the Packlock products that will soon be offered at Home Depot. Now in my last video on Wednesday, I introduced these locks and the universal cylinder system that they use. If you haven't seen that video, I do recommend taking a look because the user swappable cylinders is one of the best features they offer. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Now I decided to show these two locks together because they would be great used in conjunction for outfitting a work vehicle. We're going to look at the puck lock with hasp first. Let's push the puck link aside. It's a setup that should be familiar. Most companies have something very similar. In fact, this is close enough to the master lock product that even the bolt hole pattern is the same. And that's something that's very important because it makes retrofitting existing installations very easy. However, this HASP has a few features that I think makes it superior to a lot of comparable products. First, the lock and HASP are drilled and tapped such that you can attach the lock to one side of the HASP. We can see the holes here and here, and again here and here on the lock. Now why is that important? Well, if you install this on a van, it means that the lock is always with the van. You can't leave it on the bumper and drive away. And it also allows one-handed operation of this lock, which is very important if you've ever used a product like this and been frustrated trying to lock this up while you have a handful of tools. Unfortunately, I don't think this comes with the screws required to attach this to the hasp. At least my sample product did not. However, if you do buy it at Home Depot, I suspect you can buy them a couple aisles over. Another feature that frankly every one of these hasps should have is an extra bolt hole underneath the lock. That may not seem important until you realize that often the easiest way to defeat one of these hasps is to grind off three of the bolt heads. Having an additional bolt underneath the lock neutralizes that attack, or at least makes it a whole lot harder. Okay, let's continue on to the puck link. This is essentially a mountable lock for chaining two things together. It looks from the packaging like it's intended to lock things to a work vehicle. Here we can see it being used to lock a ladder to a roof rack. By the way, this packaging made out of steel. I don't think I've ever seen something like that before. This has an interesting mechanism. Just turn the key, it pops up, allowing you to remove one end of the chain. We'll look at that a little bit more carefully in a minute, but here's an interesting feature that shows the thought that went into this design. There's a little hook right here that allows you to hang the end of the chain on when the lock isn't on, in use. That means the chain won't hang down and bang into the side of your van. I also like that it has one-handed operation for both locking and unlocking. You saw me unlock it, but to lock it, you just place the end of the chain there and press down on the front. Once again, it's locked up. Now, this is different enough from anything else on the market right now that I'm not entirely comfortable talking about its resistance to brute force without actually doing some testing. However, I suspect most of the attacks on a setup like this would be directed to the chain, which seems comparable to other quality security chains out there. One final note before we try picking one of these, the prices. These will retail for $80 for the lock and hasp and $100 for the lock with three feet of security chain. That makes them the most expensive products in the new pack lock lineup. Okay, let's start to pick one of these. Since they both use the exact same core, we only have to do one and let's do this one. So when we take it apart, we can look at the mechanism a little bit more carefully. I'm using top of the keyway tension with a 40 thousandths pry bar and a standard hook in 18 thousandths. Now pack locks are always full of lots of security pins. Okay, number two is binding. So I'm expecting some trouble from it. A few clicks out of two, three clicks, and then it feels loose. Okay, number three is binding. Got to click there. He feels loose now. Looking on four, five, click out of six, and we dropped a little bit farther into a false set. Okay, one is binding, counter rotation. I think we got one set. Nothing on two, three, four, five, six is binding. Oh, 
and I think we got it open. Okay, so definitely a bunch of security pins in there, but let's take this apart and see what there is. Okay, so to remove the core, we'll have to remove the top of this, and that is done by removing a screw right here on the side. Now you'll also need to remove the screw if the three feet of chain that comes with this lock isn't enough for you. You wanna use a longer chain. It's easy enough to do. Simply remove this set screw, take the top off, and then you can remove both ends of the chain. I should also note that this uses a ball bearing locking mechanism, and you can see right there where it interacts with the little prongs attaching the front and the back. Okay, let's get the cylinder out of there now, and that's done by removing this screw, or at least loosening it up. And because these cylinders are designed to be swapped by the end user, if we look down here, we can see all of the internals are retained by a plate and screw. So they can't just fall out as they might on a normal lock. Okay, let's get a pinning tray over here. Okay, to take this apart, we don't have a clip on the back, but we do have a small screw here with which both retains the core and keeps it from over rotating. Now we need the key and a follower. And I think this should allow us to take it apart. There we go. Okay, we can see six pin chambers. Everything is pinned up. Let's drop these out. All of the key pins, at least, are stainless steel. And it's a hardened stainless steel, which makes them drill resistant. Let's arrange these, and then we'll get the driver pins out. I felt Certainly some serrated and some spool pins, so I'm expecting some of both. That was a spool pin in number one. And Packlock usually uses varying spring strengths to make this resistant to bumping. So I'm going to take out each of the springs individually. Okay, so we have a spool, a serrated, and then a spool. Another serrated pin. Another spool. And another serrated pin. And let's take a look at these springs as well. It looks like we have Yep, we definitely have some springs that are more resistant to compression than others. And that is going to make bumping this very, very difficult. Okay, let me give you a close up of all of this. Okay, we can see all of the key pins are standard made out of stainless steel for drill resistance. Then we have spools in slots one, three, and five serrated pins in slots two, four, and six, and we also have varying strength springs. So as far as cores of this design go, it's pretty close to the top of the market, no complaints there. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe, and as always, have a nice day. Thank you.